This year, Afghanistan saw the mighty Soviet army pack its bags and leave. As government and Mujahideen groups battle for power, will the country revert to a patchwork of warrior states? In this dispatch, Jeff Harmon and Alexander Lindsay visit a remote fiefdom in the Hindu Kush, where this man, Saeed Jafar, rules over his Ismaili people as an ancestral warlord, but in this case armed with the spoils of 20th century war. Once a British schoolboy, still a heavy metal music fan, Jafar acts as a key power broker between the government and rebels. He is the warlord of Kayan. Once upon a time, Alexander the Great conquered most of the places in the world. But when he reached Afghanistan, he was very slow down and could not advance that quickly as he was advancing in other countries. And his mother sent him a letter that why you are so lazy in that country. In answer, he sent a bag of soil from Afghanistan and told her that you spray all this soil and collect your relatives to sit on that and talk together. But when they sit on that carpet under which the soil of Afghanistan was sprayed, they suddenly started fighting against each other. Then his mother, she was very wise lady, understood that the people of this country is warrior. When a child is born in his family, in our tradition, is that uh, his father buying a gun for him. Because of that, everyone is very warrior and uh, like war and uh, uh, will not obey any, uh, any person who is not according to his wish. <laughs> Jafar Nadri, the commander of Ismailia Defense Force in Afghanistan. I'm the son of Said Mansur Nadri, uh, who was chosen by my uncle, Muki Said Shah Nasir Ranuma, to lead the two million Ismailis in Afghanistan. The Ismailis are the only independent group in Afghanistan that has the power to deal with both the government and the Mujahideen. Followers of the Aga Khan, the Ismailis, a subsect of Shia Islam, have been persecuted by Afghanistan Sunnis and Shias alike. Saeed Mansour, the titular head of Afghanistan's Ismailis, has spent a total of eight years in prison under various regimes. His three brothers disappeared at the beginning of the war most likely murdered under orders from former president Hafiztullah Amin. Shortly after the Soviet invasion, Saeed Mansour was released from prison. Together with his son, Saeed Jafar, he has created a powerful, independent political and military force in Kayan, an Ismaili fiefdom in northeastern Afghanistan. Since the Soviet withdrawal, 
Saeed Mansour and Saeed Jafar have become key brokers between the government and the Mujahideen. You ask me what will happen to the people of Afghanistan in the future. The government and the opposition have been at war with each other for the past 10 years without having achieved anything of substance for the country. We are neither at war with the Mujahideen nor do we oppose the government. Until now, I have acted in such a fashion that both the Mujahideen groups and the government have come to trust me, and they both listen to me. I have appointed Sayyid Jafar as commander of and therefore he is more willing and ready to accept my command. He is prepared to maintain strict discipline in this time of revolution, as well as maintaining friendly relations with all sectors of the population, so that no one may have a cause for conflict. A visit to the remote areas of Kayan chiefdom. The entire population comes to pay tribute to their commander-in-chief. It is Saeed Jafar's duty to collect taxes, settle disputes, and officiate at trials and weddings. Square kilometers. There are two million smilers all over the country. But our strongest force is here in Kayan. Kayan is a part of Afghanistan, but in many ways, it's a separate country. Sunnis living here, Shias living here, we're all brother, but it's Ismailis who control Kayan. The electricity, the weapons, the taxes, everything. Afghans are always fighting each other, from their nature. The groups of the Mujahideen, different parties, they fight with each other. Under government, different parties, they fight with each other. But my father has responsibility to solve both of their problems. You see all these mountains, they all belong to us, to the Ismailis Defense Force. You see at the backside, the famous Hindu Kush mountain, it's our land. Anybody wants to disturb us, the government or the opposition, we don't care who they are. We just fight against them and kick them out. <laughs> Yeah, 
We deal with both sides in Afghanistan. Our defense force controls a part of the highway in Salah. So the government troops can move freely. Our defense force also controls the old road to Kabul. So the Mujahideen can get their supplies. I have over 12,000 men fighting against whoever wants to mess around with us. We have agreement with the Mujahideen, but sometimes we have to fight with them. Last week I heard some of the groups wants to attack us. But if they do, we will hit them hard. If they cross the line, we're just ready for them. This is Tala Barfak. This is one of the borders of Kayan. And uh, you see through the checkpoint, that's all the Mujahideen's the territory. This is the road from Kayan to Kabul and uh, to Pakistan. If we cut off the road, the Mujahideen couldn't get any supplies. We used to have a fight with these Mujahideen at this border. There are graves here where my men got killed. And since we had an agreement, and now they can go through our border anytime they want to get their supplies. They were from Hizb Islami, about 60, 70. Mujahideen, they just passed before them. And they're not going to bring some weapon, you know, to Afghanistan. This is a special way we are fishing in our country.
When my father was in jail at Daoud Khan's regime, I had to run away from Afghanistan. And I went to the Blue Coat School, Birmingham, England. When I was 14 years old, I went to the United States, to Allentown, Pennsylvania. I was a kind of wild teenager in the States. I was a member of the motorcycle gang in Pennsylvania. I love hard rock. I still do. I did a lot of crazy things in the States. I'm an Afghan. I love Afghan music. But my favorite is heavy metal. I used to play drums in the US. If I play drums here, everybody will think I'm going crazy. Like sometimes I'm in the car or alone, and uh, if I put the cassette of ACDC, especially my favorite song, Highway to Hell, my friend will just ask me, what the hell is going on in this tape recorder? But it's very difficult to explain it to them. I had a fantastic time in Pennsylvania. I always remember it. Like working at the McDonald's in Allentown. And I promise you, I can make the best french fries in Cayenne. I don't know where I would be if I was still in Pennsylvania. Maybe I would be a millionaire, maybe I would be in jail. But when the war started in Afghanistan, I had to remember our country, my father, my family, my people. That's why I am here. When I went to England, I was 10 years old. I couldn't speak English. When I came back to Afghanistan, I was 17 years old. I could barely speak Persian. But it was very difficult for me to live in both cultures. The Ismailis of Afghanistan, they believe in Allah Khan. Allah Khan is the 49th Imam, our living Imam. If he says all the Ismailis in Afghanistan should die, we will do it. And this is no bullshit, we will do it. The Ismailis donate a tenth of their income to the Aga Khan. In Afghanistan, the Aga Khan has decreed that Said Mansour may spend the money as he sees fit. You ask me what I do with the tax that I collect on behalf of the I would like to point out that according to the instructions of the Islam, people give a tenth of their income to us. One example is the Rachnoma Hospital in Kayan, which is the only major medical facility in this part of Baglan province. There are patients who have fought for the government and patients who have fought against the government. There are children who suffer from malnutrition. There was even a patient, three years old, who was addicted to snuff. His mother started feeding him snuff when he was six months old. This hospital is not just for Ismailis, but for every Afghan in need of treatment. During the past 10 years of war, hashish, opium, snuff and heroin addiction has been a big problem in our country. An example is this brother of ours, who became a drug addict after his father was jailed. Four years ago, my father was imprisoned. I met a man who was addicted to heroin. He said it was very nice and it would make me nervous. 
بعد از چهار سال پدر بعد از یک سال خلاص شد و ما را آورد از شفا خانه که اینجا تا شفا یافتیم به طوری مجانی شفا شفا یافتیم و تدریب ما شد این کایان We have many refugees from all over Afghanistan. For example, we have about 300 Tatar refugee families here. These refugees were kicked out from the Mujahideens. My father has responsibility to take care of all of them. He gives them money, supplies, anything they need, even if they stay here for one month or if they want to stay here for the whole of their lives. This is Kayan village, the capital of Kayan. There's about 2,500 people living here. We've got everything here. We have all sorts of shops here. We have a metal shop here. We have a man who can build an airplane if he has the parts. We have the stables for horses, dogs, cocks, quails. We have a carpet factory here. It takes about six weeks to make each carpet. And of course, we have a new mosque, which is the center of the village. We have an armory. We have dashikas, zikoyas. different kinds of machine guns. And we have rooms filled with bullets and weapons. Sometimes we get our weapons from the government, uh, from the Mujahideen, and uh, from the black market at the border of Pakistan. Saeed Jafar entertains everyone in Kayan. There is a secluded house for government officials, which before the withdrawal, was used by the Russians. A road was built for Soviet visitors to arrive undetected. There are several different rooms to meet the Mujahideen. Saeed Jafar does his best to keep the opposing guests separated. We are friends with everybody, the government, the Russians, the Mujahideens. But whoever wants to disturb us, We have to fight against them. I am Saeed Abdushar, commander of the prison. There are 42 prisoners here. 24 against the Ismailis and were captured. 10 armored prisoners, 10 fortified heights, and 2 were captured in Amr. What is this? Does he think his sentence is fair? How much, how many, how much time is he going to be in prison? Does he think it's a fair sentence? Is it too much time? Too little time? What does he think? Everything is fine in Afghanistan. Eggs, dogs, clothes, cats, even the small children, you know, they wrestle. They don't care. And they look at each other. They know they have to beat each other. Chef, chef, chef, chef, chef, chef.
Dog fighting is a uh, traditional sport in Afghanistan. They get uh, trained when they are very small, you know. And uh, after they fed very nice food. And when they're one year old, over one year old, they fight very, you know, dangerously. And this is a very big sport in Afghanistan. You see one brother fighting for the government, and you see another brother fighting for the ID. In Afghanistan, whether they're Sunnis, Shias, or Ismailis, if they get attacked, they fight for the death. Even the women fight for the death. Like all the foreign countries invaded Afghanistan, the Russians just didn't understand Afghanistan. The national sport of Afghanistan is Buzkashi. A headless sheep or calf, the booze, must be carried by a rider the length of the field and dropped in a circle. Saeed Jafar is an accomplished Buzkashi player. It 
can't imagine this more than the things of the chest. The chest is policy. I'm not a I'm not a president. Afghanistan is not too man playing chess. And Afghanistan is war. It's just like this country. Everybody's pulling. If they play this case, we have to just take it, put it in a circle, to tell people how tough we are. It's what I like, to just play this case alone. Otherwise, if they're size, you know, you have to be somebody's side. But you don't like to be somebody's side. We like to be our own side. Our own side is our own side. Kim Mor tabiatu milleti mamara lisan mamara vadan mesaj ki bajim yapar. İlk mana başım ki düşmen cemiyet başı. Ne kadar ki buranın rahat başı. O kadar ki demek kamlan can kere güzel ve kalbi bir anlazana üstü. Aram ve hizmet ki bu başa çiz bir şey bir dastur bir muvaffakatla bunu takdim etmek var. Saeed Jafar was recently appointed military governor of Baglan province. He learned his skills as a negotiator during the Russian occupation. Throughout the Soviet withdrawal, Saeed Jafar was busy securing his own position. Saeed Jafar, how can you tell us the help of the soldiers from the army? بگویم کنندی که پیش ما باشه با خاطر یه چهار نفر سرباز شما که دیو وقت از افغانستان خروج میشه و طرف وطن خود میره بگو بعد شکل شوه چی با پیسا چی با آر مشکلاتی که پیش ما رخ برخ شوه ما مجبور مکلف هستیم که بر شما امی چهار نفر سرباز تو نه دوباره پس مسترد کنیم و شما بتوانیم با خوبی طرف وطن خود حرکت کنیم بدون ازی کدام بدون ازی کدام مشکلات به اصلا یا کدام تعدید از جای بالاتر سر شما بیاد ما مجبور هستیم با شما هم کاری کنیم و هم کاری شما هم ما میخواییم با ما ما یه سنوش توی تا تیجلو باید زیاد بدون شده نخواهی سو دکتر اسماییو اون پچینیون حکمتیارو 
إذا ما فكر ما كنا كي يبصر مشكل باش باش ما بخاطر كوا بيش ده في إسماعيل وده في إسماعيل ما تبدي ما تيارمش. نبينا قولي بدين не пойдет на то что вас выводит. قولي بقى قولي بدين ما فكرنا كنا بقى سيد منصور ما فكرنا يكونا. أتمي وزبيل بقى أنا خلاص كده بدي استأذن شو ما قررنا. Но если сам Саид Мансур будет заниматься этим делом, то я думаю, что мы добьемся хороших результатов. Я знаю, что недавно Саид Мансур вел переговоры о том, чтобы вы были губернатором провинции Баглан. А хватит у вас сил, чтобы защитить эту провинцию после нашего вывода? مسئولیت از شورای سالان آمده راست از این کار بگو من مجبور مکلف هستم که اینمی تماما امورات نظامی و ملکی از این مردمی که به اصلاح پوستار اشغال میکنه و تحت قیادت خود میاره من مجبور مکلف هستم با پوستار بگیرم پرابلم با کلی نیست پیخی مطمئن باشین ما میتونیم که به اصلاح امنیت از این منطقه را شما ایرا مطمئن باشین که امی چهار نفر سرباز شما که پیش دکتر اسماعیل است دوباره پس پیش شما می کلام پرابلم نمی آید خلاص شو؟ خلاص شو اوکی Afghanistan is like a salad. It's all mixed up, just like this. We don't want to kill anybody. If anybody wants to ride us like a meal, we have to. Orbal! Orbal! Before the war in Afghanistan, we couldn't protect ourselves. But this war is 100% good for us. Because we have plenty of weapons to protect ourselves for the future. Any future government, doesn't matter what it is, they have to deal with the Somali's independent power. Go, I see, go, I don't know. 